So I'm doing the day job today uh, and it's one of the rare occasions when I can mix business with pleasure. Uh, I've got a meeting with one of my clients in Dorking and they're not too far from Box Hill so I've never ridden up there before uh, so I thought today would be a great opportunity to just put the bike in the car and give it a go. It's mid-February and I have to say that the weather is fantastic. Dry, clear blue skies and 12 degrees Celsius. So pretty warm for this time of year. I'm really looking forward to getting on the bike and riding up the famous Box Hill. Right, gonna get changed now, so look away. Unfortunately for me, this is not my normal climbing pace. I've speeded the whole thing up so that I do it in about two and a half minutes. I didn't think that anyone would want to sit for the full 90 minutes and watch as I puff and pant my way up. As many of you will know, I'm not the best of climbers due to being somewhat gravitationally challenged. But if you look at the data on screen, you'll see all my numbers, speed, cadence and heart rate. And although the gradient of the climb is only generally about 4-5%, to my speed is still pretty low. By way of explanation, I'm still working on building my fitness base, which means I'm trying to keep my heart rate between 70 and 80%. Although to be honest, I couldn't have gone much faster than this anyway. If you really do want to see the climb in real time, then I'll post it separately. Today I'm riding up on my specialised Alley, which is only an aluminium framed entry level road bike, so it is fairly heavy. It's also my first ever ascent up Box Hill, so I'm just kind of setting an initial time for Strava and all of the segments that will be up here. I think it'll be very interesting to come back in a few weeks with a better bike and hopefully when I'm a bit fitter and lighter to see if I can improve on today's times. I know many of you will have ridden up Box Hill on Zwift, but if you want to do it for real, you'll have to head for Dorking in Surrey, which is only a few miles from London. You'll find the climb itself just off the A24, a couple of miles north of the town. As climbs go, it's not particularly steep or long, especially when you compare it to the ones in the Alps or Pyrenees. Box Hill is exactly that, a hill rather than a mountain, but it came to fame during the London 2012 Olympics when the cycling road race featured it. Even though it's not the Vontu or Alpe d'Huez, it's still quite a talking point amongst cyclists to say that you've ridden up it. <laughs> Made it. Having put in all that effort, I'm rewarded with a view of the beautiful Surrey countryside on an absolutely gloriously sunny day. Now comes the easy bit, descending back down the hill to the car, and if I can negotiate the tricky hairpin safely, I'll treat myself to a well-earned cup of tea in the cafe at the bottom. So that's Box Hill done. That's the first time I've ever ridden up there. It's quite an iconic climb. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was uh, two and a half kilometers long on the main climb. Um, a couple of little steep bits, eight, nine percent, but nothing, you know, desperately uh, severe or anything like that. But no, um, I enjoyed it, it was great. So 
here I am, back in the car, en route for Dorking and Box Hill. Last time I rode up, I was pretty slow, but today I'm going to put that right. I'm going to ride up Box Hill twice. The first time I'm going to use it as a warm-up and just to reacquaint myself with the climb. And then the second time I'm going to give it everything I've got and try and get a PR on Strava. When I rode up last time it was mid-February and I was still using my specialised alley which was quite heavy. Today it's mid-May and I'm using my Trek which is carbon framed and a fair bit lighter. Although it's officially late spring it's still quite cold, only about 12 degrees Celsius which is why I'm wearing a long sleeve jersey. I feel that sometimes wearing a short sleeved one allows slightly better freedom of movement and makes me just a few nanoseconds quicker. Now while my overall fitness isn't bad, I can't honestly say that I'm anywhere near being a trained athlete. The best I can probably get away with is that I don't think I'm any less fit now than I was in February. If I was being kind, I might even say that I have the edge today, but let's see. One advantage that I know I do have is weight. It may only be a couple of kilos, which I appreciate is not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but at least I know I weigh slightly less than I did a few months ago, and that should help with my power to weight. So that's my first descent done. Um, I found that pretty tough, even though I was trying to take it fairly easily. I was in my lowest gear, pedaling away, around uh, about sort of 70 80 revs per minute and my heart rate was up about 80 82 percent so i'll just go back down and uh, do my second ascent but like i say i'll give it everything i've got and try and get a pr i would imagine that many of you out there have ridden up box hill on zwift in which case, you're probably sitting there wondering why I'm in the middle of the Surrey countryside and not in central London. Well, the answer is very simple. Those good people at Zwift have relocated the climb so that you can ride around the city and then virtually test yourself up one of the UK's iconic climbs. It's located in the Surrey Hills, which is officially designated as an area of outstanding natural beauty. During the summer, there are many sportive rides, all taking in Box Hill and many of the other local climbs such as Leith Hill. And what I've seen of it from just driving around in the car, Box Hill is actually one of the easy ones. When I rode up here in February, it was my first time up Box Hill and I didn't really know what to expect. Having heard a lot about it, I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult than it actually was, so I held back and tried to pace myself. When I got to the top, I was fairly surprised that it wasn't the leg and lung buster that I'd expected, but having said that, it's not an easy climb by any stretch of the imagination. It's still a hill, it's still a cat 4, with an average gradient of 5% for 2.5 kilometres. Yes, I know it's probably a breeze for a 20 year old racing whippet, but for a 50 year old shaggy sheepdog, it's a bit of a challenge. Oh my word, that was tough. Uh, I, I did a combination of uh, slightly higher gears and pedaling slower, and then when I got really tired on the steep bits, uh, I changed down and span for a bit. But uh, I think I've beaten the PR. I'll only know when I get back and look at Strava, but. Uh, uh, I'm pretty uh, tired after that. Heart rate went up to about 90, 93%, so I was really giving it some. So I'll be very surprised if I haven't got a PR. Good morning. Back in February, I rode the published Box Hill segment in 14 minutes and 41 seconds with an average speed of 10.2 kilometers an hour. By contrast, I completed my ride today in 11 minutes and 27 seconds with an average speed of 13.1 kilometers an hour. 
That obviously means I have indeed got my Box Hill PR. And as you can see, I also have the PRs on all the little sub-segments as well. So all in all, not a bad ride. I'm, I'm fairly pleased with that. Um, so what about my next challenge up Box Hill? Um, the obvious one is another PR. Um, yeah, and do under maybe 10 minutes. That's a long way away, but uh, at least it's something to aim for.